It's the first ever competitive meeting between Greenwich Borough and Dulwich Hamlin. Alan Turvey trophy action at the DGS Marine Stadium. Dulwich arrived this evening off the back of consecutive league wins for the first time this season. They reached the stage with a comfortable 4 0 win over Grays Athletic in round one and make five changes from Saturday, including a return from illness for Mark Weatherstone and Sanchez Ming from suspension. Greenwich have also won their last two outings, results which have taken them to the summit of the Ryman League Division 1 South table. They too have made changes from their weekend's game, a staggering eight to be precise, with a run out for plenty of under 21 players. So can Dulwich reach the last 16 for the 18th time in their history? Or will it be Greenwich reaching round three in their first appearance in the competition? Michael Purcell awarded a start tonight, trying to tussle on the far side. Carew dispossesses Britnell. Turns away from Green, nice. He's only got Issa ahead of him, but he might be in here. Mohamed Issa just forced a little bit wide. Taylor staying tight to him. What can Issa do? He's gone for goal. That's held by Preston Edwards. Relatively comfortable save for the goalkeeper. In it comes. Green's arriving. Heads wide. Got up above his man and maybe should have hit the target from close range there, Nathan Green. Big opportunity for Dulwich to take the lead after four and a half minutes and he's wasted it. And the Dulwich left back. One more looking for Michael Purcell. Touch was from Rogers. Daniel brings it under his control. Three around him. Lovely ball here goes Nathan Green. I say loves to get forward. Britain for company goes inside and back to Carew. Ball deflects, turns into a good pass to Daniel. Onside, which they cross goal, and in the far post, it's Roman Michael Purcell, and he's finally got his first Dulwich goal. It's taken him 26 games. He's felt he's due a goal. Daniel with uh, a lovely turn to beat his man, sent in the cross, and Michael Purcell was there. Fire it high past Reese Hughes. It's only taken less than 10 minutes. Dulwich take the lead in this one. Taylor. Mark Weatherstone. Gavin Tomlin, lovely turn from him. Trying to throw it through. Michael Purcell's on his way again into the area. He goes, pulls it back. Dan Carr, 2-0. Lovely finish from Carr. Michael Purcell gets an assist to go with his goal, and they do have two goals in three minutes. Clinical from Dan Carr, in off the far post, into the bottom corner. And uh, 11 and a half minutes gone. Dulwich are 2-0 up now. Crew again. Taylor. Green. Here goes Tomlin. His turn to make the move forward. Sanders Stewart stayed tight to him. It's pulled back though. Carr with the attempted volley. Just placed over the crossbar on the end from Dan Carr. Lovely ball into him from Gavin Tomlin. Those who have linked up well this season. He used to go short this time. No one picked up the run of Britnell. Issa again. Crosses charged down. Comes for Britnell though. Good first touch. Carl's clearance found Cadell Daniel. Back to Dan Carr. Pink shirt slowly making the way forward. Lovely ball by Carr to the uh, opposite flank. Michael Persil. Dulwich breaking at some speed. Ming in towards Daniel just beyond his reach. What a counter attack that would have been. Cadell Daniel not too far away from getting on the end of that. Jonah. Morate back to Jonah. Brittle's done really well there. Gets away from three, slips it through towards Issa, who's goal side of Taylor. Still Mohamed Issa goes down. The assistant referee didn't raise his flag. The referee looked over to him, and that looked a clumsy challenge from Mark Weatherstone. Well, it's forced to pass it around the defence at the moment. Carew. Michael Purcell. Well, Sanchez Ming, yeah, that's Michael Purcell. Lovely ball through, here goes Tomlin. Still Gavin Tomlin, this for three, good save by Hughes. Well, drew the save of the keeper, rolled his defender nicely. Keeper made himself big and found the save. Ming, looking for Michael Purcell. Dealt with effectively enough by Rogers. There goes Issa again. That's a lovely ball into him. A little bit wide, but he has support arriving in the middle if he can pick out a cross now. Goes back instead. Brittnell goes down. Penalty is awarded this time. Issa to take. 
Saved by Edwards. Rebounds come out to Miller. It's the first penalty they've saved this season. First penalty they've saved since the playoff semi-final last season. Edwards guessed right. Wasn't the best penalty in the world, you could say, from Mohamed Issa. Wasn't in the corner, and it was a comfortable height for the goalkeeper, but he still had to get there, Edwards. Taylor. Daniel. Carew. Green's on the move again. Carew looking to find him. It's not a great back header by Jonah, allowing Green to gain. Pulls it back. Carr still can find the shot. It's charged down. Shouts of handball, mainly from the Dulwich fans behind the goal. Dan Carr did raise an arm in question. Here's Carew. And Tolu Jonah could have made a big mistake there. Here's Daniel now. Early ball in, flicked away. It's come from Michael Persil. Can he find the shot? Yes, he can, and flashes wide. Can't Taylor. To his Green. Britton all trying to put him under pressure. It goes back to Quay Taylor. Weatherstone. Carew. Beanie. Carr again trying to bring it down from a, a height. Daniel. Fancies a go. Off the post and away to safety. Grinch under the cosh in terms of no possession at the moment. Dulwich not really doing much with it though in terms of creating chances. Three quarters of the way through this one. Granted, have time slipping away from them now. Now to get back into it. Still not done and dusted this one though. Carew, that's given away. Pungi deflected it into the path of Beanie though. That's a good run from Sakaja. Still with Sakaja, a couple of step overs. Goes for goal, deflects. Deflects behind for a corner. Well, he is dangerous, Ibra Sakaja. And burst his way through. And Pungi. Up to Power, his first involvement in the game. Up against Mark Weatherstone here, Michael Power. Still wants to get away from Weatherstone and Tomlin. Affectionate nickname of Shaggy at this football club. Here's Power. Beanie mops up and finds Edwards. Giving away though, cheaply. Easy tap in. And Greenwich out of nothing are back in the game. Jake Britnell with the easiest goal we'll score all season. And the goal scorer for Greenwich Borough, number six, Jake Britnell. Out of nothing, as I say. And Dulwich have been comfortable all evening. On the whole, all of a sudden, we've got a game on our hands here. Weatherstone, they need all of the experienced players' leadership now. Done it some more experience of these two sides. In terms of the uh, number of appearances the players have made out there. As I said earlier, a lot of this Greenwich side, under 21 players. They have a good fight tonight. They're back in with the hope of this one. Zakadja. Looking to run at Pilbeam, rolls inside. Gavin Tomlin goes early. Places over the top. Big opportunity for Dulwich, just couldn't keep his shot down. Crew to take the free kick. Deep ball in. Great save by Hughes. Tremendous save. Danny Carr got up. Must have thought he was scoring his second, but Reese Hughes has pulled off a blinder of a save there to keep his side just one goal behind. David Beanie. Greenwich happy to have them have their opponents on the ball there. So Kadja does keep it in play. Again, looks to run at Pillbeam. Onto his right foot, finds the cross. Michael Persil, not the tallest in the world, but had a free header. Could only. Not it wide. Long way off target as well from Roman Michael Purcell. Wolf Greenwich got left in the tank. Jonah. Tomello, Caleros. Dulwich, all this experience. Can they see out this game? Beanie. Tussling well. Linking with Carr. So Kadja's making the run in front of him. Carr goes alone for the time being. Up against Stanley Stewart. And goes early. Comfortable save though for the goalkeeper Hughes. No power in the shot from Carr. Difficult one. Pungi links up well with Mello, sends in the cross behind the two players that are arriving though. And Green can come forward for Dulwich. Can they seal their place in round three with a late goal here? Hasn't been a comfortable night for them. Here's Sakadja. He's gone for goal from distance and it's a long way over in truth from Ibra Sakadja. Nowhere near troubling Reese Hughes. Again, it goes long. Weatherstone got the touch. Taylor has to hook it away from his penalty area, though. Good defending, Quaid Taylor. Tomlin. Michael Purcell holds off one challenge. And a second, and Carr's onside here. 
So slowing it down. Into the area he goes though and drills it. Hughes makes a save, it'll be a corner. Maybe long ball forward. Taylor goes back to his keeper. Full time whistle goes and Dulwich are through to the last 16 of this year's Alan Turvey Trophy. It's not been a comfortable evening by any stretch of the imagination for the away side. They were 2 0 up after 12 minutes. A first Dulwich goal for Roman Michael Purcell, giving them a 10th minute lead. And two minutes later, Danny Carr found the uh, bottom corner via the post to uh, give them a 2 0 lead. Mohamed Issa saw a penalty saved on the half hour mark. Preston Edwards pulling off that save, but they did get gifted a goal. Edwards giving the ball to the captain, Jake Britnell, with 17 minutes to go to uh, tap into an empty net to give Greenwich hope. In truth, Dulwich fairly comfortable in those last 17 minutes, though. And as I say, they're through to the last 16 of this year's Alan Toby Trophy. Full-time score at the DGS Marine Stadium. It's Greenwich Borough 1, Dulwich Hamlet 2. Gavin, this after the start you made wasn't quite as comfortable as you maybe would have predicted tonight. Um, yeah, we made a very good start, I felt, uh, in the first half. <clears throat> you could see we were uh, uh, two levels, or sorry, a level above uh, Greenwich. But they had a young team out, um, and that was to be expected. Um, I thought that we have, again, been more ruthless in the first half than the game sort of beyond them, and they don't come out in the second half even trying to to uh, stay in the game. But, um, <clears throat> I mean, they did the right thing. They put bodies behind the ball, um, and we, we failed to really show the ideas or um, the imagination to break that down today. Shuffled the pack a little bit tonight, given game times like of Roman and Cadell have not started too many games this weekend. Danny as well. What do you think of the guys coming in? Yeah, initially I thought um, the three of them done well. I think uh, Cadell had a hand in the goal, um, in Roman's goal. Um, I think Daniel scored a second goal. <coughs> so, they, you know, all of them contributed um, to, to us scoring our two goals tonight, which, which is good. Um, yeah, they may be lacking a bit of match uh, fitness, but um, just felt some of their their play wasn't decisive enough. Um, I mean, we're you know we're trying to <coughs> have a team that wants to to challenge to win the league or at least um, be in and around the playoffs, you know. And we've got to look at um, the end product and, and think we're playing against really a guys uh, sort of 19, 17, 18, 19, and in the league below as well, you know. So we've got to do more. I know at times we've spoken about the, the lack of end product from your wide players this season in terms of crosses and goals. Roman was overdue. Like, it's his 26th game for the club tonight, his first goal. He's due to score more than that, isn't he? Yeah, again, it depends on what his own aspirations are. Um, I think, you know, his, everyone else can say he should be scoring more goals, but if he, he needs to feel that himself and he needs to, to, to put more pressure on himself to score more goals um, because he's had enough opportunities even tonight he should have scored more than one goal you know so it, it, some, some of it comes down to your own mentality and I think um, he has to challenge himself to, to, to hit higher numbers because at this club having a <coughs> wide players we expect 15 to 20 goals a season um, if we're if we're going to be successful from wide players and like you say 26 games and, and one goal um, yeah we need we need improvement. Is it fair to say your side sort of slowed down a little after the, after the break they took the foot off the gas and that's what led to the mistake for their goal? No, I don't think I don't think that's the case. I think, to be honest, I just thought they they put bodies behind the ball and we showed them um, a lack of imagination and how to break their lines, and um, and how to penetrate them. And I, I just felt um, at times we run out of ideas, to be honest with you. So um, I mean, the, the mistake from Preston, uh, everyone knows, <coughs> um, it's, a, it's a poor poor mistake, and obviously it's going to be on. On, on camera and he, he's got to live with that you know so there's nothing really else to say about that but apart, apart from that I don't think anyone's took their foot off the gas I just think they probably run out of ideas and um, got frustrated. I know we said on Saturday that the Cups aren't the priority this season but with the players you brought in tonight getting game time plus those that have played a lot in recent weeks set you up nicely the whole squad for Saturday. Yeah, um, the main thing is that we don't have any injuries from tonight um, that's the main thing. <coughs> um, ordinarily uh, with a free week, we probably would have tried to organise a friendly of some sort anyway. Um, not to say today was a friendly, but it, it represented a match action for us. It represented uh, us not thinking, uh, waiting from Saturday to Saturday to play. So <clears throat> we got that. Uh, people got good minutes under their belts. Um, and I believe that the, the, the squad is getting fitter and stronger. And it was important that they play today uh, rather than just having a, a night off.